In 2024 alone, SpaceX performed a whopping 133 successful rocket launches. But what does it actually take to launch a rocket? And is it as hard as it seems to be? Guess who decided to check it? Welcome to the first episode of... First of all, you might ask, why even build a rocket? Why bother? Well, like, that's not something people do. And my answer to this question is, why not? Of course, I love rockets, and it's a challenge that will test pretty much all the abilities I've gained throughout life. Uh, so yeah, I thought it would be fun to do something that's not necessarily practical, but just fun. And now that I have the excuse to build a rocket, let's assess the primary goals of the project. Because in a project of this scope, you might want to keep adding things indefinitely, and in the end, never end up finishing the project. Hmm, I wonder where I know that from. So for this rocket, as it's my first one, I decided to go pretty simple. It's supposed to fly up, be stable throughout the flight, uh, get out of data, deploy parachute at Apogee, and then it's supposed to land safely on the ground. To add on top of that, except for being stored on the flight computer, the data will also be transmitted uh, via radio. And if it wasn't enough, I will write a piece of software that will allow me to visualize the data on the launch site. So now that we know what to do, let's actually build it. And the first step of building anything is designing it. For this purpose, I will use Open Rocket, which is an open source program where you can design and simulate your rockets. So we'll start with the rocket's body, for which we need some kind of tube. What? Oh! So I measured the Pringles can, put it in a program, and made it double. Now to design the rest of the parts, we'll need to know our propulsion and recovery systems. For propulsion, I really want to make a rocket candy motor, uh, because not only is it way cheaper than uh, buying commercial motors, but also seems relatively easy as easy as, you know, making our rocket engine or a motor gets. This, however, isn't without any downsides. Commercial motors usually have this load on top of them that ejects the upper body's contents along with the parachute. A custom-made motor won't have that. And I could make my own black powder chargers, but then I would be risking my fingers being blown off far more than I'm comfortable with for the first rocket. Uh, so I came up with an idea. What if instead of putting the parachute under the nose cone, we made the nose cone firmly attached to the tube and stashed the parachute inside of it? Then the nose cone would have to open on a computer's command and release the parachute. To do this, we'll nest a servo right underneath the nose cone, make a hole so the servo's horn can move inside of the nose cone, and then we'll need to split the nose cone so the side will be held by the horn, and then inject it along with the parachute by a spring once the servo lets go. Next up is the flight computer. We'll mount it to the bottom of the nose cone, so even if something goes unnaturally wrong, and if the nose cone tours through the upper body's tube and falls out, uh, the computer can still have a smooth landing with the parachute while the body plunges into the ground. The components we'll use are the following. An accelerometer to read acceleration and rotation of the rocket, a barometer to read the pressure and figure out how high the rocket flew, a radio module to transmit data in real time, an SD card reader to save the data locally, and a GPS to locate the rocket if it goes out of sight. The only module here I fear we might face issues with is the SD card reader, because they're known for malfunctioning in high vibration environments. And can any of you give me an example of a high vibration environment? I know, a rocket! Exactly! And yeah, that's why it might be an issue. Hopefully it's not. It Still, we have to keep it in the back of the head. I want the rocket to be as stable as possible, and for that, the weight needs to be distributed evenly, or as evenly as possible. That's why I weight every single component and calculated how they need to be distributed across three sides of a triangle, and then designed a part in that shape with small component shaped indents to mount the components in. I also included the bridge in the middle. This is where the GPS antenna will go. This might have been a little bit, just just a tiny bit over-engineered, but you know, if it works, it works. Hopefully it will help. Then to power the avionics, I will mount a Li-Ion battery right underneath the computer. It will be placed in a separate mount. And here's a catch I'm really proud of making, actually. If the battery were to fly the right way up, uh, it would most likely lose contact points because of the way forces acting on the cage would transfer from the spring to the battery. So I made a generational move and mounted it upside down. 
Now that's it for the design. Let's heat up some plastic and print them out. First, I printed out fins and they have those small guides that should allow them to slide into the holes I will cut out in the bottom tube. Next came the nose cone and it took a couple of iterations, but it didn't take long until I got the final part ready. Once it was printed out, I glued a spring into the socket on the inside, printed out the nose cone side, broke it and then redesigned it so it's stronger, printed it out again, except this time in white, not only for aesthetic reasons, uh, which actually turned out pretty cool. Uh, but also because I ran out of red filament in the process. It happens. After that came the time for the motor mount. In the middle of it, I will put a piece of cardboard tube because as it turns out, cardboard is a pretty good insulator. This should prevent the mount from melting or at least doing so too quickly. The motor mount will be mounted to the rocket's body with M3 screws and something I discovered some time ago and ever since I've absolutely fallen in love with. Here it inserts. The assembly of the avionics bay was rather smooth uh, the parts fit in, however, it was all until I had to actually connect everything with cables. I widely underestimated how hard it would be to fit all of those cables into such a tight space, and after using some plastics and electrical tape on the pins to prevent them from falling out, it works. And then the most stressful moment of all, connecting everything to power and praying you designed everything correctly so the board won't fry. It didn't. And the only thing we lack now is the parachute. And I considered a bunch of materials for it, but in the end, I settled on some pretty light shower liner I found in the furniture store. Then I cut out a hexagonal shape, cut the six holes near each vertex, reinforced them with silver tape, and pulled double lines from each of them towards the center. Then I connected the lines in the middle with a metal ring along with a polypropylene line uh, which I attached to this arch in the middle. But wait, 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 hold on. I can't just launch a rocket and hope the parachute and the ejection system work. So I did test out the parachute in a pretty unconventional way. I bet my neighbors think I'm nuts. I also tested out the parachute ejection system like 30 times because I really wanted to get a shot of the parachute opening, but it would always open outside of the frame. And sometimes before opening, it would encounter some obstacles. After those successful tests, I painted the body white with red accents and gave the rocket a name, Polinik or Fielder, because it will be launched from a field. This joke sounded like 200 times better in my head. <laughs> but since I already mentioned it, the rocket will be launched from my local field uh, once I go back to Poland in the summer. Why not where I am now? Well, let's just say not every place on Earth is optimal for launching rockets. And this introduces yet another issue. Remember how I wanted to make the rocket candy motor? Well, I can't, uh, because, because of the lack of regulations in Poland, it would be considered a pipe bomb. That's why I decided to go off with the strongest motor I could get without a license, the uh, TSP F35. Surely the change of propulsion method at this stage won't change anything, right? Right? I also quickly assembled a receiver with a connector sticking out for the antenna. Hey, is the editing me? And I just wanted to say that I also built the software I told you about in the beginning. But I didn't record anything about it, so that's how you get to know. So my friends and I headed to the field, equipped with camera gear, lunch rod, which by the way I also made but didn't mention because I have no footage of me making it, a table, bunch of other stuff, and the rocket itself. After taking way longer than expected to set everything up, we were ready for the launch. And this is probably where I should finally state that rocketry does not belong to the safest of hobbies. And your number one priority should always be your safety. That's why we had a fire extinguisher ready, just in case, and that's why in footage you see me wearing these safety glasses. I can't stress this enough. Always wear eye protection when dealing with explosives, propellants, you know, whatever that could rapidly approach your eye. But now, the thing you've been waiting for. And that's it! Thanks for watching, there's no need to play the rest of the footage.
the launch day of this rocket was the unluckiest day I've had in my entire life. Like, it could easily make it onto the Murphy's Law Wikipedia page, as an example. Because holy, every single thing that could have went wrong, indeed went wrong. <laughs> Starting with the field where we were supposed to launch at first, being closed off through the receiver not working on site. The fact that we were supposed to get a really nice footage from a drone, but then after approximately 10 seconds of flight, the drone's arm randomly broke, all the way to the parachute not deployed. If you're really interested in all of the things that went wrong, then go ahead, there's the entire list. And I will only cover the most important fail. Why didn't the parachute deploy? To answer this question, we should go back just a little bit in video. <laughs> Surely the change of propulsion method at this stage won't change anything, right? Right? I'm an idiot. See, I said the rocket was designed for a custom motor without an ejection charge and then used a TSP F35. More specifically, the version 35-0. Commercial rocket motors usually come in different variants and depending on which you pick, the time between the burnout and the ejection will differ because I picked the Dash Zero version, or the Zero Seconds version, uh, right after the burnout, the motor activated the ejection charge. So while the rocket was still ascending passively with the velocity it gained. My theory, which unfortunately I can't prove because I have no data from this flight, is that when the ejection charge activated, it caused the rocket to tilt a little, and because it was really slow at this point, there was not enough force from the opposing air to flip the rocket back. So it rotated by 180 degrees and because the rocket's firmer was developed by me, it did not account for the case when the rocket, you know, flips 180 degrees during passive ascent. That's not something I thought of. So the computer was stuck in the state, uh, waiting for the rocket to reach the apogee, but it never got there and therefore didn't know it was supposed to deploy the parachute. But not everything about this flight went wrong. Uh, you know, the thing I was worried the most about was the rocket's stability and it actually was pretty stable. Another thing I'm really happy about uh, with this flight is the launch itself. Uh, you know, it, the rocket didn't get stuck on the rail and started strikingly. It looked pretty epic and was rather flawless. So yeah, that's cool. Overall, just as expected, the project was really fun to make. Uh, I, as always, learned a lot from it. There was a ton of mistakes to learn from, so it would be actually pretty impressive if I didn't learn anything. And as much as I'd love to fly another rocket as soon as possible, uh, the as soon as possible will most likely come next year. But that doesn't mean I won't be doing anything in the meantime. So as a quick announcement, there is a video coming most likely next month. Uh, so I encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my content. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.